Hi again, this is Melissa Tackett Gibson and I just wanted to um, take a few minutes to walk you through how our course is designed. Now, I wanted to point out a couple of things in this video. First of all, this may not be your exact course. Um, I teach a couple of different courses online but I try to structure them in very similar ways. So this uh, introduction should help you regardless of what class that you're in. Another thing uh, that I wanted to point out is that I am in uh, student preview mode so you'll see that bar at the top um, of, the, of the video. First of all uh, this would be the home page that you'll see when you click on the course for the semester. I um, may use some announcements, but generally I will email you any announcements for the course. Um, if an exam is posted, I do generally try to add that to the announcement. So you can see here in this course, I've added um, a, a quiz. Okay, so we can go back. Um, just as a as a suggestion, I. Um, I, I don't use this to do. I do add um, due dates to several of our exams and assignments, but um, I've had students tell me that this isn't necessarily very reliable. So I want you to um, check during the course weeks, and I'll tell you about that, um, to make sure that, all, and the, the course syllabus to make sure that all of your assignments um, are due and they're turned in at the right time. Okay, um, I have set up a virtual office. Uh, you can send me email through the email uh, link or tab. You can also um, visit me in the virtual office. I have some instructions there, but in short, basically what you do is you click virtual classroom, and then uh, I have set up office hours. I'll not be using this lecture hall or the virtual uh, lecture hall, but I do use the office hours. Now, if you launch that chat tool, you might need to um, download the latest. See, it's, it's asking me if I want to run that. But you may need to download the latest version of your browser. You may need a, a, a Java update. But um, it's going to ask you if you want to run the application. You can do that. And then basically what it does is it pulls up a chat function. Um, once you join, your name will be over here on the left-hand side, and you can just, uh, basically this is an instant message, message app, and you can write whatever you want and send it, and then everybody that is a participant in that chat in those office hours that day will see that. So if you've used a, um, a, a chat function on a commercial website, um, they're very similar to that. Um, you can also send a private message. You can select one of the participants and send a private message to just that participant. I try to set up office hours um, at least about two hours a week. So you can reach me here by text. Um, of course you can also call or email. But I just wanted to show you how to use the virtual office. Okay, under the uh, bolded uh, tab course information you'll see a course introduction video. Um, again, that video is applicable to all of my courses. Uh, you'll see your syllabus and schedule. I separate the syllabus and schedule because you really don't need you know, a 10-page document. Those schedule is only a two-page document and that's really probably what most of you will only need to, uh, to print out or to reference. Um, I've also shown you what textbooks uh, you'll need in the class and then some recommendations for um, which books to purchase, maybe how to be creative about getting those. And a link called Book Chapters, I believe um, in one of my courses I call it Textbook Chapters, but it's the same thing. I try to give you as much uh, of the material that I can given the copyright limitations um, particularly in this class you'll see and in, in all my classes I try to give you at least what you need for the first exam. So if you have any problems or delays in getting your books you can um, go here to book chapters and have that material up through the first exam. 
I might also have a, a tab or a link on films and you can view that and see which films um, we might be watching during the course. If you are in an online class, it is your responsibility to get the films. Um, if it's a film, uh, these particular films, if you have uh, Amazon Prime or Netflix, Inequality for All and A Place at the Table is available at both. Uh, that's true of, of my other classes um, sometimes as well. But I, I'm not allowed to upload many films on the Blackboard because of copyright laws. So uh, if you see a film and I've not, I've not uploaded it in the course weeks, then just know that you're responsible to find a way to watch that film. Um, I can't send you to other um, websites where it might be free, but I have had students tell me that they've been able to find their, uh, some of their films for free online as well. Okay, under course content, uh, this is where you can find what we need to do during the course, the content of the course. And how I've designed it, I've designed it in what Blackboard calls modules or learning modules. All you need to do, I call them here under the tab, Course Weeks. And this uh, week structure follows the syllabus. So in the syllabus, when it says Week 1, this is the material that you need for Week 1. The syllabus will say Week 2, and this will open then on the day that Week 2 begins on the syllabus. So if we go to Week 1, for the most part, uh, the only um, thing that, that I do in all of my classes is introduction. And basically that's because we have a, a truncated week at the beginning of the semesters. So I break you up into groups. Um, normally this, this looks a little bit different, um, but for this class it wasn't working well. Let me see if I can show you a, a a different one that's more typical. Yeah, and, and this is how it should look. There were some glitches in that other example, but there should be a link. You can click on that link. Um, I've put you in a group. Um, I can see all the groups. You'll only be able to see your own group, uh, but um, you can click on that group and it'll show you the introduction. I'm sorry, let me exit this. and show you the group. Okay, so how do you do your group discussion? You will, you'll we'll, again, once you click either uh, in course weeks, the course introduction, I mean the course discussion link, and I'll have a link in every week if, if a discussion is required. Uh, you can click on that, or you can go over here to the tab discussion groups. Basically, they're links to the same thing. If you go to discussion groups, you'll only see your discussion. Um, and you'll click on that link. It will show you the members of your discussion group. And then you can go to the group discussion board. I'm going to do that over here, and you'll see. I'm sorry. OK. To begin with, in all of your classes, um, I give you a um, discussion board instructions. They're pretty lengthy, but basically um, the bottom line is, is that you'll click on the link um, here, and then you'll introduce yourself. You introduce yourself by creating a thread. You'll create a new thread. You'll type in what you need to, uh, to type. In a discussion, you have to create a thread and make your initial post first. You won't see uh, the posts of any other students in that group until you actually post your discussion. Um, that, I do that for a couple reasons, mainly just so um, what happens is normally after people read the first discussion that someone's posted, um, it tends to shape your thinking about the topic and um, all of the posts tend to be very similar. Not copied, but just very similar and that's because um, everyone's kind of following the lead of the first person and it's not necessarily uh, what we want to achieve in, in terms of having a discussion. So uh, you'll have to create your thread, make your discussion first, um, and then you'll see the other posts. Now once that's done, you can click on the, on the um, introduction 
Um, I hope I'm not sharing anything personal. Um, and there'll be a reply. You can reply. Um, or you can directly email the author. So um, if you're the author, you can delete the uh, or edit the post. If you're not the author, you don't have that option. But if you want to make a reply, you can just simply uh, reply there. Okay, we'll go back. All right, so that's uh, in short what uh, a discussion, the discussion um, uh, instructions. One of the things I do suggest is that uh, you write your response offline in a Word document and then uh, you post it online. There's nothing more frustrating than spending the time to craft a response and then um, to, to lose it. So uh, I always encourage people to do that. I, I can't recover things that are lost, so keep that in mind. In this class for uh, week four, um, we have a discussion on the syllabus, and it, your discussions might look like this. Um, I might offer a video, but basically I call this a prompt. So all of this information, families and theoretical perspective, um, will be a prompt, and then I'll ask some questions. Again, you'll click into that forum, create a thread. Once that thread's posted, you'll be able to read the, the um, posts of all of your other uh, group members, and then you can reply uh, to those group members. I'll um, show you one from another course. Okay, this is very similar. In that uh, you'll have uh, some videos to watch. In this instance, I put those videos in the course weeks folder, and then you'll answer that discussion. I've also included in all the classes uh, a note on discussion grades. So this will tell you a little bit about how I grade the discussions. I'll, I'll be honest, most of the discussion grades tend to run relatively high, uh, so posting something is better than posting nothing. And then I encourage you not to worry about your discussion grades by the end of the semester. Most students um, tend to believe that discussion grades influence their final grade more than they actually do mathematically, so um, I wouldn't worry about your discussions. Um, just please do them because I think they're good thoughtful exercises and of course uh, those students whose grades are impacted generally are those who just simply fail to uh, post a discussion at all. Okay, so that's course weeks. Again, uh, this is my view so I'm able to see these weeks but you uh, will only see the weeks that are open that we've, uh, I've set these other weeks to open as we proceed through the syllabus. Okay, uh, again, if in a course week we have a quiz, you can click on the quiz and you'll see the quiz. You'll begin to take the quiz. Similarly, with discussion groups, if you can also click on quizzes as a shortcut and then you'll see the same uh, week three quiz. So, um, also in exams, there'll be a link in course weeks, and then there'll also be a link under exams uh, where you can take the exam. In most, uh, for most exams, I, I have some troubleshooting tips. Um, there have been instances, this is, I think this has been worked out um, since I posted this, but for the most part, Madeline Kilmore, Kilgore can help you, I can help you, um, but when you're taking an exam, uh, please just realize that 24-hour um, support is not available and since your exams might uh, they might be due over a weekend um, neither myself nor Madeline can uh, necessarily be available on the weekend so um, please start taking your exams early and so if there are any problems we can troubleshoot them early in the week for each exam I'm going to give you some notes on the exam 
that will tell you what the exam covers. Um, it'll relist the readings, and then I have some rules for the exam too. And I've already covered how your exams will work um, in the syllabus uh, and the uh, course introduction video. I'll list the day that the exam closes. If this is different than the syllabus, you go by the syllabus. There's probably a mistake. So just uh, just email me and if there's a mistake, I'll, I'll correct it. Um, for this particular class, I had some students that were interested in developing a study group. So I set up a group discussion and people could come together in that class-wide discussion and study if they wanted to. And if anyone's interested in doing that, I can do that as well. Okay. Um, the Dropbox. Uh, for your essay exams at the end of the semester, I also have an essay exam um, page, again, with some uh, questions and answers about how to construct your essay exam. This is where you'll find the final um, essay exams. You'll, you'll see the study questions, and you'll also see uh, the uh, final two uh, essay, exam, uh, essay questions that will be on your final exam. Dropbox is where you'll submit all of your uh, written material, and I'll have different links uh, to uh, that material there. This is where you'll also find um, yeah, all of your extra credit. Um, if I'm requesting any um, uh, anything from you over the course of the semester that's written, I'll have that link in the Dropbox. Okay, and then you can learn more about your extra credit opportunities under the extra credit tab. Any of the um, files that you might need, uh, the food pantry extra credit form is listed here. Some locations, I tend to give far more information than you might need uh, for these. I've, uh, for the SNAP, for example, if there are some other links that might help you do that, I've added those. Um, your community service project form. Sometimes these links are hard. Uh, the file uh, uh, attachments are a little bit hard to see, but um, if you look, they tend to be right there. I'll show you too in course weeks. Um, I've had students overlook some of the PDFs. So um, and you should have a lecture. They might not always be a recorded lecture, but there'll be a lecture uh, that's attached, and then there should be a link to PDF. Sometimes that link to the PDF falls right under uh, this, uh, the lecture title. Um, but if you'll look, you should see a link to a PDF. Sometimes I have just simply an audio file there as well. Okay, um, just a, a couple of last things. If you have any questions, hold on just a second. If you have any questions during the course, um, you should be able to look um, at a, uh, the course facts. Course facts uh, frequently ask questions that have come up um, over the courses of multiple semesters. Um, so feel free to look here and see if any of your questions are answered. I'll show you how to view your grades um, and talk more about that. I um, have some questions. I've had questions about the books, more questions about discussions, and I offer you some pictures of um, how to um, submit your discussions and just kind of follow up what, we, what we've walked through here. I also have a help button, and at that help button you should be able to find some numbers that you might need for support. Okay, well I hope the semester goes well and this helps you navigate the course.